Hi, I'm Andy Parr. I'm a graduate of Florida Central Academy, otherwise known as FCA. I graduated in 1972, and here with me today is a man that I've known not only from Florida Central, but from my preamble, or my first step to Florida Central, the Colorado Summer School, a man who is a teacher and administrator, vice president of Florida Central, Bob so uh, yeah, so Soak up. Or Suka. Or Suka. Because you don't... You Believe it or not, Andy, there's, there's 69, according to the Chicago Tribune, there's 69 pronunciations and spelling. I just remember that you would pronounce it one way, and Colonel Allen would pronounce it another, so we never no, knew well, I always pronounce it as my grandfather did when he came to Chicago from Prague, mm -hmm. Czechoslovakia, and that they change it to so cup. They dropped the immigration dropped the first U, mm -hmm. and it became so cup. And that's what you prefer. And that's what we prefer. So and cup is the second. Is Bob so cup. I and I prefer. Come on, I prefer now. We're way out of the Florida Central Academy, gone for many years. I'm Bob. Okay, I'm Andy. So okay, now, Andy. <laughs> Let's go back in time. Sure. Okay. You went to the Citadel, and I've read some interesting history on that. After the Citadel, you pursued a life in teaching. How did you end up at Florida Central Academy? I was teaching in South Carolina at a very fine private uh, military school called Carlisle Military School in Bamberg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine, the head of the English department, Garland Hancock from St. Matthews, South Carolina, came down to uh, came to see me one day and said, hey, I'm going down to see a new school opening up in Florida. Mm -hmm. Would you want to go down? Well, to be honest with you, he didn't have a car. I had a car. So that sort of answered the question. We were spring break. I said, sure, I have nothing going on. And I'd been down there on a number of times further south to Miami and scuba diving. That's a whole different chapter again. Anyway, Garland Hancock and I left on spring break from Bamberg, South Carolina, and headed down to this area, Lake County, to Mount Dora and Mount Plymouth to check out the Mount Plymouth Hotel and Country Club then. At that time, the brand new Florida Central Academy, non-accredited at that point. Yeah, was it open at that point? It was open. Uh, the, the staff and the president took students in, but no seniors, only up to the junior grade, so that the following year, the juniors would now become the first graduating class. Now, where did the students come from? Oh my gracious, Andy. At that time they came, he recruited from, to the best of my knowledge, probably 36 states, uh, maybe 10 foreign countries. Mm -hmm. As we evolved over the number of years, uh, we had 23 foreign countries, including mainland China, and uh, 42 states. We also had developed and opened uh, for many years a summer school in the Rocky Mountain National Park area, right in the shadow of the National Park, Estes Park on f famous Fish Creek Road. Yeah. And I believe you, know, you were, I, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you were a student there if I remember right. Yeah. And what year was it that you first arrived at FCA? I, it was spring vacation. Mm -hmm. So I came to that school. I, I, I could care less about even working there at that time. What year? What year? 1959, 1960 academic year. Okay. We were in spring break. Florida Central Academy was not. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we stayed right around the corner. We're here at the Lakeside Inn, Mount Dora, recording this. We, I stayed at the Grand View Inn right around the corner on Grand View Avenue when we first came down, because I remember it so well. And then moved on out, and this was the spring of uh, 1959. We went on out to the school. Garland and I did. He was offered the position of head of the English department. I came, I was a driver in other words. In other words, I had the car. I just drove down for the lark. <clears throat> when we arrived at Florida Central Academy that Saturday, I met not only Colonel Allen, the founder, but also another Citadel grad in the class of 1914. General T.L. Alexander, Tom Alexander. 
Well, I being a, a later grad of the Citadel, there is camaraderie between the two. This was Saturday, the Saturday morning inspection was going on that General was conducting. At that time, this was an all-boys school. There were no girls, and it was run militarily without uniforms. Okay. That was the main point. That's, that was the crux of the school. No uniforms, but we teach good leadership plus academics. You know, that's a good point. How, you know, and I realize when the school is new and unaccredited, how do you market it to students to get them to come there in the first place? Well, believe it or not, after I came in the summer of 60, that was my job to recruit, <laughs> as per Colonel Allen's request, the state of Florida. Did you have to go around the country? And I know my area at the time because I had commitments in Bamberg with the city at that time, uh, just due to my background there. But when I came down here and, and actually became part of the administration, <clears throat> my job was to go down to Fort Myers, Miami, uh, oh gosh, inland to Lake Wales, to Avon Park, Sebring, so and Central I actually Florida. recruited for Florida Central Academy in the, in the state of Florida. Now, you brought up a point that it wasn't a military school, but you wanted to run it with that type of discipline, but keep it a little bit more casual? Well, it was more casual. What we were looking for were students that had the academic ability. Maybe not achieving that academic ability, but were not disciplinary problems. I was working in a school, a military school, and Colonel Allen had two in Georgia that took care of disciplinary, quote, disciplinary problems. We didn't, he didn't want that. That was the premise of the school. No discipline problems. Academic problems? Yes, definitely. And we would take those students that had academic problems, coach them, work with them, so that they would become better academically with the possibility, and I use the word possibility at this point, to get into college. Mm -hmm. And that's... It, well, that's let, me, let me just add this point so you would know mm -hmm. the, what happened using those premises. And this is documented, not by us. And I won't say who at this time, but nationally. Okay. We graduated while I was there in the number of years, uh, over 2,500 students. The number of students being accepted to colleges and universities throughout the world, throughout the world, was 98 plus percent acceptance. Getting their degree, either a two year or a four year, but getting their degree, the rate was 73 plus percent from Florida Central Academy. We, later on we became one of the top five private schools for academia in the state of Florida with absolutely no deficiencies in accreditation. Going back on accreditation while we're right there, we were fully accredited with no deficiencies with Dr. Ray Sowers, head of the ed uh, Education Department of Stetson University, as our chairman of accreditation from 1961 all the way through 20 plus years of full accreditation. Unbelievable, with no deficiencies. Now, uh, academics is one area, but when you're living in an environment, especially, you know, teenage boys. Now, I'm sure my memories from being a student are going to be different from yours being administration. My memories are very simple. That it was a very liberal environment. The discipline, it was minimal. You know, there were some demerits or whatever the point system was. That's back correct. Then. But it was minimal. And it seems like some of the best life lessons you learned from students at that point was living independent, making your own decision without having heavy supervision. At what point did Florida Central start going that route and allowing the students to have more freedom and more choices as compared with other schools? I'd say that close to 99% of the faculty 
beginning of Florida Central Academy, had all worked in military schools in which the cadets had a disciplinary problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking one or two years, I'm talking years mm -hmm. that we worked within those schools. So we knew that area of academia quite well. Mm -hmm. We decided to go through from the very get-go, and I'll go back on the staff and all. Anyway, from that, we decided that we would not take that military uniform and all the military stuff that went with it, but we would take and develop the leadership, the good leadership of the military into the academia, combine the two into a school, all I can say is you've never heard of before. And that was Florida Central Academy. But, but stress, you have the, ac and one thing we did stress in any interview, you've got the academic ability. You're not achieving. We want you to achieve in your academic ability. You're already a good person. What was the secret of getting students who would underperform at other schools prior to coming to FCA to get them to achieve? One of the things that we, we stressed greatly uh, was to, we'd like to see you go on and go to higher education. We will help you obtain your entrance into higher education to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And you think that would motivate? And that was a lot of motivation. Uh, again, we were not, if, if you were up uh, as, as a disciplinary case in the courts or anything, we would not look at you. We'd turn you away. We don't want you. There are other places for you to go. But if you are having trouble academically, not applying, this could be due to athletics, this could do, be due to the school activities, this could be an automobile driving around, et cetera, et cetera, back in those days. No cars. Mm -hmm. You're at the school 24 hours a day, under faculty supervision, on the halls, all the time, in your classroom, and everywhere you turn, there's a faculty member just urging you to do the best you can and don't get into mischief. Now, looking back, you look at your career there, do you think there were a number of discipline problems or were people, were the kids pretty much able to govern themselves? I think that there were, I won't say no, that we did not have some discipline problems, but they were so minute that those that had academic problems outweighed. One of the things that very few people realized, we had 23%, even back in those days, of students who only had one parent. Wow, that's interesting. Yes. And that we would take that child where the mother or the father was unable to be there 24 hours a day, we became, and you saw this uh, with our parents, to become your parent and watch over you. And if you needed a little bit of spanking, you sort of received it. Okay. <laughs> you, you rake the yards on Saturday and you watch the others go by bus into Orlando or wherever to go to the mall and you were on the campus and couldn't leave. And I think I only had one weekend like that. And you never had another one, did no, you? I did Because <laughs> you learned.